I really want to see my own stuff and my world come to life. My own characters have stories, and I feel like if I'm not contributing to that, I'm wasting my time. If you don't know who that is, that is Ross Tran, who is one of those people that is so exceptionally talented that it makes you feel bad for slacking off. So he's only 24 years old, and yet his portfolio is one of the most fleshed out, <laughs> perfected things I've ever seen. Like he's able to consistently create hit after hit after hit after hit with like this level of polish that you would normally expect from like a large studio with lots of artists critiquing things. But for Ross, it's just like another week. Um, personally, what I like about his work is that he doesn't shy away from what other artists would call crutches. Like he's blatant about using color dodge and like all these glow effects. And really he just, he's just interested in just making cool looking stuff. And that's really what I like about it. Um, but as well as that, he also understands the fundamentals. You can really clearly see that. It's not like a one trick pony sort of thing. Anyways, the guy is just really, really talented. Um, anyways, three years ago, he created a YouTube channel um, where he started making like short, fun, like mini tutorials about how he creates one of his pieces. Um, and not only that, but like in one of the most fun ways possible. Um, and as a fellow artist, who is also on YouTube trying to make learning fun. Uh, I feel like I have a lot to learn from this guy. Um, and as you can imagine, when you combine exceptional talent with entertainment, it blew up. So his channel is like just going crazy at the moment. So if you are interested in learning 2D or even just being inspired, because it's very inspiring, make sure you get on that train and subscribe to his channel, um, which I'll put in the little box, wherever that is. Um, anyway, so I had the pleasure of sitting down with Ross and interviewing him and asking him all the sort of questions that you would probably want to ask him. So we talked about how he got started in art, uh, his first job working for Disney and why it wasn't for him, keeping art fun and why that is crucially important, you'll see, having an open mind, the importance of connections and finding a mentor, and just general advice for growing as an artist. And speaking of exceptional results, <laughs> we need to talk about our sister company, Polygon, which makes episodes like this possible. So if you want to create world-class renders, you need world-class assets. So come to Polygon and discover the difference that a professional sharp texture can make to your renders. And now on to the interview. Uh, super excited to have you here. Yeah, totally. So happy to be here. Uh, so tell me, have you always been artistic? Yes, I've always been artistic, but there are a lot of like roadblocks um, for me, a lot, like getting to do art because um, my dad didn't like me doing art. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I had to like hide it a little bit. Okay, yeah. uh, why didn't he like it? Um, typical Asian family, you know, they uh, want their children to become, a, a, you know, like a market of doctors or dentists or accountants or something practical. Mm -hmm. um, so growing up, uh, I think for the first few years, I did art, like I loved art, you know, as a kid, he was fine with that. And then when I got to elementary and like real schooling, he thought I drew too much. And so he would actually hit me, you know, it's, it's, it's like an Asian thing, it's fine. Like <laughs> he would hit me every time I do art. And so I drew my homework. I would do, like little doodles and then he would come in and he'd see that and he's like you're not doing your homework I was like oh shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he would hit me and then it was hard and so over time I fell out of like like love for art because I couldn't really do it I had to hide it but in school you know I drew on the desk the notebooks the textbooks everyone knew what it like who did it <laughs> I did it you know I'm the only one that draws on textbooks <laughs> and so I would do that, um, and then not until my parents divorced, which is uh, when I was in uh, seventh grade, and he moved out the house. And that gave me a lot of like freedom to actually kind of take art on again. And nothing happened like overnight, but I slowly and gradually started drawing and painting again and creating again, and it was fun. And then, um, yeah, and then ever since then, I started pursuing art further and further and further. Dude, yeah. <laughs> so you must have you had a really burning uh, passion for drawing. 
I love drawing. It, it was it was very interesting. Like I'm thinking about it. I'm like I just wanted to draw, but I couldn't pay attention. Um, I think I'm pretty sure like ADHD is the thing, um, and uh, I could never pay attention in school. I feel like it's never interesting to me, and I like to you know what I mean. And I'm more interested in drawing, and so I have a natural tendency to just ignore and draw. It was just like I think something you know with me, and so I just. My grades were okay. They were, they were good, you know. I didn't like slack off so were much. Were they Asian okay? <laughs> yes. For um, when I lived with my dad, they were like 4.0s, you know. Oh. I was like, yeah, because he said um, in order for me to check my email, I had to have a 4.0. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Checking email is um, code name for playing RuneScape. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so, like, hey, dad, um, I just got a 4.0. Can I check my email? <laughs> Whoa. And so um, I would just play RuneScape in the back and pretend to write email. You know, there's like, I, I was like 12. What email am I getting? <laughs> For my friends or something like that. Um, so yeah, the, I would just do that. <laughs> so you would so you'd go around yeah. on your textbooks and you'd leave like little trails, little notes that you'd been there in a way, little right. breadcrumbs. Yeah. And your dad saw them and he would, what, just... Basically, he, he like I, it. Um, anything kind of. Basically, he wants me to be the perfect son, and if he could limit any type of um, factors that could distract me into being the perfect son, then he would uh, take it out of me a little aggressively because he thought it was a tactic to learn, right? Mm -hmm. That was his method of teaching me, but sometimes you know his anger got out of control, and some you know people aren't perfect and uh, take the hold of him. And so he became a little abusive, um, but um, it's, it's fine now. I feel like it's just life, you know? Uh, people go through things, and that was one of the things I went through. What, uh, what does he think of your art now? He's happy. He's, uh, he's happy, but he, has a, he wants me to always do better. And, he, and sometimes I, like, I know he appreciates what I do. And he know, I, know, I know he's proud, but he thinks it's his job to always push me, right? And that's parents. But I just want him to understand. I hope he, like, I hope he knows that I got to where I am because I pushed myself. And he, sometimes I just want him to simply just be a father and never raise any questions about like business. Because when I hang out with him, business, hey, where's your business? How much are you making blah 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 and so it's kind of hard you know he wants he still has that trait of me wanting like him wanting to have a successful son and like i always tell him dad just trust me you know i i know how to i feel like i know how to do life <laughs> mm -hmm. and so just don't worry about that stuff because i want to hang out with you and do things without ever you know, talk about business and mm. money and stuff like that because I don't like that stuff. Mm. I just want to like draw, um, and yeah, that's. I think it's personalities. Yeah. 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 And uh, what did your mom think? Um, my mom, luckily, is the opposite. Okay. I feel like she has some tendencies to, uh, you know, become the parent and check up on me. Um, but I, I told my mom one thing in high school because my parents divorced, and so like she had to basically. Uh, work a lot harder to provide income um, and so I told my mom one thing just trust me and never worry about me hmm. I got it and I, I told her maybe two or three times because you know sometimes parents are like but you have to come, but you have to and it's like mom just trust me I know what I'm doing and so I applied to one college <laughs> it freaked her out because you know we like to have options or she likes to yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, like a lot of like um, versatility. But I'm like, I know where I want to go, <laughs> and I'm applied to this one school. And when she got when when she heard that, she's like kind of freaked out. But when she got the acceptance letter, she's like, Yay! My son's going to college. <laughs> what was the college? Um, Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. Have you heard of it? Yes. Yeah. That's the third time I think. Uh, really? Someone yeah, we've oh, been cool. interviewing talked no. about. It. Yeah. Um, so you went there from what years? I went there when I started college when I was 17, so I moved down to LA when I was 17, and then I, uh, I spent three years there, I think, and I took a year off, because I f didn't feel like I loved art anymore, mm -hmm. and then I picked it back up to graduate. Right. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> how, is, uh, how is art 
Art Center. Center. Right? Art Center. Yeah. It's, How was it? It was good. It was definitely um, life changing for me because of um, what I was exposed to and what I've experienced. It's not your traditional college. Mm. And sometimes I feel like I miss that in my life because I see, um, I feel like there are certain stages in people's lives. And I like the college phase, I seem to never have gotten, but I feel like I'm kind of living it now a little bit. <laughs> right. But um, I felt like I was thrown into grad school. So I was um, with people that are 23, 24, 30. Um, I was the youngest in my class and the average really? age to get in, yeah. Wow. The average age to get in was like 22, 23, 24. And I was 17 and I was like kind of a little scared but at the same time I'm like, I know what I want to do, I know what I want to be and I have no reason to be scared. Mm. And so, um, yeah, it was kind of like a interesting dynamic through Art Center. I think my favorite thing was connections. The connection and friends I've made um, and me growing as a person and I, I felt like a lot of growing up was at Art Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you think uh, the connections helped you? I think um, it got me my first uh, big boy job. Big um, boy job? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, so my best friend, um, Noel, at the time, um, in college we would like, you know, we're best friends and so he recommended me for a job on a Disney film. And I'm like, it's out of, it's almost out of nowhere, right? I was like 19, and it's like, hey, you wanna? We're looking for a character designer, and um, I show the director your stuff along with a few other portfolios, and he likes you the most. We, come on in. I'm like, okay, sure. Uh, it was kind of like it was kind of weird, right? Because like, I don't feel like like I've experienced life, or to that point of working on this movie, and so it was a weird dynamic sometimes when they took me to the head of the like desk producers and the prop makers because I made the character to a movie mm. and the prop makers are like hey give us some notes like hey um, what what do you think about the um, the prop that we've made off your design and I was like I've never given feedback before whoa like, but that was the first time um, I've ever worked on something like a movie and uh, I was tasked with creating the main character <laughs> the main little robot okay. um, inside the movie nice. and um, it was it, it was fun it was interesting um, because first it was like what I do you know drawing designing stuff like that and then it got real when the props makers actually built it like they did it in 3d like a 3d model of it and then built it and I didn't like see or know any of this <laughs> so they called me up to um, the upper floor of the studio execs and stuff like that because they wanted to review it and have a meeting and so they brought me in and they're like, hey Ross, this is what we made. What do you think? I'm like, what? <laughs> this, is, this is what we made. Um, do you have any notes for us? Like, what can we do better? And I was like, I've never given feedback or like a critique like that, you know, in that kind of type of setting. And it was Whoa. surreal because I saw it, like I saw it. And it was like a, a slight connection and like a good memory of like seeing it come to life, but I've never seen that before. And mm. it was like a really weird moment, but it's like good in a good way. But I was caught off guard when they asked me for feedback. And then my production designer came in and he took the ropes. He's like, okay, cool, change this, change this, tweak this, tweak this. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> wow. Um, and yeah. Why, why, do, why do you think you didn't have uh, anything of, like you could, you could give? I think it caught me so off guard that um, I've never had that type of the right moment or opportunity to actually give feedback because I was in school, I was still learning, I was kind of fresh, and um, it, it was just like a new experience, a new moment um, that I wasn't exactly ready for, I guess. Uh -huh. um, but looking back at it now, like I feel like I can do it now. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, do this, da, da, da. but before I was like, ah, I'm 19, I don't know what you want from me. Right, right. <laughs> I, I'm supposed to just eat and sleep and draw. So this was during Art, St Art Center? Yeah, Art so this Center. was uh, during Art Center. I think it's during the summer, so we were off term. Um, and yeah, the the movie came out. It was it was crazy. It was like, like, you know, like, hey, this is the first thing. And my mom bought movie tickets with uh, for my whole entire family to go see it. And they saw my name in the credits, you know, take a picture of it. Oh, nice. And it was like a really cool moment. Um, but being like after doing that though, I realized that 
I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> like it was a good experience for me, but I don't, um, I feel like other people would be a lot better at uh, that job. I feel like I would like more creative control with uh, my things. And so I felt like I couldn't have someone above me all the time, like a uh. confining um, what I need to do because, you know, movies um, have a restriction, you know, of what, because they are also meant to gain money and you have to find the right balance of that. And um, the art director wants something, they have a vision. Uh, the production designer wants something, they have a vision, director. And so it was a lot of like tweaking one thing and I feel like other people might be a lot better at that and want to do that. I feel like I like to be a little more expansive and have a lot more creative control into what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point you learned you just got to be your own boss. In a way. I'm like, I don't think I can work for people the rest of my life. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's a crazy like first, first job, right? Like, so this was, so it was during Art Center. Right. Um, and yeah, you got, you got the job of making a lead so it was like the original concept sketch, right? Yeah, um, like the very beginning, there was a script, and it's like, hey. And so my director said, well, I actually did these at home, in my childhood home, um, because uh, I wasn't in the area, and they said, hey, send something over. Um, I think it was also a test, you know, to see if I can actually do it. Mm -hmm. And so I did it, and he said, the first round, I nailed it. And so, like, for my first initial sketch, I captured the story and um, stuff of what he wanted. And I was like, oh, great. And then, and then we started having a studio and um, like everything is a phase in movies, right? Mm -hmm. You have to get greenlit slowly and slowly. So the sketch has to get greenlit and this has to get greenlit because the execs are like, they really want their thing. And so if they don't approve something, they'll tell them and change it. And so it was a very slow approval process into getting made, but it got made and um, over time it got more budget and stuff like that, you know. Whoa. Huh, and so, so you were still going to um, art center. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about your career prospects? I think at that time, um, actually, when oh yeah, so after it, no, it was a fun experience. You know, um, it was really cool to see everything come to life. I came back and uh, I started like be more confident in my art in a way. Yeah. Um, I. Um, it was cool, it wasn't like life-changing, but it just n steered me into like a different direction or something. And so um, so I still went to Art Center for like two to three more years. Um, and so I was about 21, I believe, when I quit. <laughs> I quit Art Center <laughs> and, and I left to uh, pursue acting. Really? Yeah, I... No way. <laughs> what, wh right. wh why, why suddenly acting? I feel like, in a way, Art was kind of handed to me. I felt like I was always good, good at it. I could draw, you know, and I, at like a young age, you know, people thought I had drawing skills, so um, that was my thing, my talent. I was viewed as the artist, and oh, Ross, so talented, blah, blah, blah. And I felt like it was kind of handed to me, and I wanted to just embark on something completely random. Not random, but like I loved, like I thought I could be, in my mind, I thought I could be a really good actor. And I was like, hey, I think I'd be really good at this. And it's something I've always wanted to do. And I think I should do it now. And so after that semester ended, I, he was living with me at the time, I think. Yeah. My friend off screen was living with me at the time. Uh -huh. And um, I told him, I was like, hey, I'm going to do acting. And um, so I just found a studio in Hollywood. I moved there. I had no idea where to start, but I loved it. You know, really? okay. I, I absolutely loved it because it felt like I was like living. Like I felt like I was living. Whoa. And so I was searching on Google, hey, acting school, where do I start? Try to find some acting school. And I had some money saved up from the years um, to do this. And um, the money went down quick <laughs> because I'm not working. <laughs> and nice. so um, I was doing it. And then so I had a studio uh, apartment. I was learning everything, headshots. Um, reading lines, uh, getting a manager, getting an agent, like the whole shebang. Um, I think the most like uh, I've ever gotten out of it um, was an audition for uh, a Fox pilot. And um, the executive producers of uh, Psych and Scrubs, I think, was on it. Okay. And that was like the realest moment 
ever because I was in the room and I've been working up for this, right? I'm like, I quit art and I'm actually doing this thing and I'm really proud of myself for even getting this. Like, and I did this all on my own. Nothing was handed to me. Yeah. And I was in the moment and I did it. I was kind of nervous um, and I didn't get the part. They went with, so the role was an Asian designer an Asian designer couldn't he, be more perfect. I know he was a, he he was the best friend to the lead, like kind of like quirky and kind of me. And I thought I thought it was me. It was like my role, and this yeah. is what I've been working towards. Mm -hmm. And then um, I didn't get it. They went with the white guy. <laughs> yeah, it was all good. Actually, he's on Netflix right now. Um, and so I think it was on Fox, and they Netflix. I'm not sure they resumed it. What's it called? Oh, it's, um, I forgot the first part. But it's something Barry's Guide to Surviving High School or something. Oh, okay. Have, have you heard of that? No? I might ring up. I don't know. I've seen so many yeah. scrolling right, on Netflix. Right, right. Um, yeah. I'll probably send it to you after. Okay. Uh, but it was, uh, it was fun to like, do that because I felt like I have really earned that. And I was so proud of myself for because um, I wasn't that confident before. I grew up very insecure and kind of like unconfident mm. and to do that to absolutely drop everything I was good at and to pursue something foreign and I know that I have to work hard and earn my place here mm. and the thrill of um, auditioning for them to see have them see something in me and I'm like whoa this is awesome you know and I did that all on my own um, I think well, I didn't get it. And then I think a few weeks after or something like that, I still went to audition, but I feel like something was missing again. I feel like I miss the art. <laughs> I love, you know, doing art in the first place and I missed it. Yeah. Um, so I, that's when my YouTube channel formed. It was, um, I spent a week inside my bedroom just playing with camera angles. I wanted to do something new, something different. And I feel like th this was fun for me. And um, I had some time, and so I played with uh, concepts of videos. Like, I made everything, like normal speed painting videos. My mom gave me um, money for a tablet. I said, Mom, I really would love this. It's an investment for like what I, what I want to do. And um, she knew that art was my passion, and so she got me my first antique. Like, and so I was playing around with it, um, just having fun, right? Yeah. And that's when I made my intro video and my first YouTube video, which is uh, drawing Daenerys Targaryen. I have, <laughs> I had no idea how it was gonna go. I was scared for my life, you know? It's new, you're putting yourself on the internet, which is like, you know, everyone's gonna, you know, potentially watch this. And, and critique it. And <laughs> critique it, right? Everyone has thoughts. And so I was kind of scared for thoughts, but at the same time, I, rem I remember my root, which is I wanna do this. And it's fun. And so I just did it. And within the first video, I think I got like a few hundred shares um, on my personal Facebook because I already had a, a following from, um, from doing art. And so they're like, oh my God, Ross, what the, what the hell is this? We love it. And so they shared it to everybody and everyone. So I got um, like a thousand subscribers. I think it was a thousand. I got a thousand subscribers off that first video. And I was like, oh, this is so fun, you know, because there's a YouTube algorithm thing. Um, you need a 500 subscribers to claim a URL, uh, right? Cool. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I couldn't claim my URL unless I had 500. And I would literally ask my mom, everybody, just, just like, hey, can you subscribe? So I had like, like I don't know, 20 right. <laughs> when I started. And then um, after my intro video, I gained a few. And then after the first one, a thousand, I'm like, yay, Ross Jobs. Nice. Um, and so that was like kind of the birth of everything. I think uh, everything kind of flowed into one another to guide me in the right direction. Yeah. Dude, wow. Why, why do you think you felt like drawing was, the way you said it almost sounded like it was cheating, you know, like yeah. it, it had been right. given to you? Yeah, I, I felt that um, it was it's something you grew up with, like, mm. I grew up drawing and I felt like I was good at it, um, but I didn't feel like there was a substantial challenge that I mm. ever experienced. Like I didn't feel like, like looking at everyone else, um, I've conquered this or I've done this and I feel like I needed an experience 
that felt absolutely challenging and I want to test myself mm. as a human being um, and that's something I wanted to do like I've always wanted to be an actor it looks it looks fun and stuff like that it's a lot harder than I originally thought anything is yeah um, but that was like a personal challenge I wanted to endure and I learned a lot about myself because you know when you're acting and being in the moment you have to there are certain skills you know you have to project and learn about yourself and how you admit you as a person into the lines as a person, you know, mm -hmm. in, um, and deliver it. And also improv, thinking on your feet, thinking of uh, something, something really fast, following through. Yeah. I think that's the, probably the biggest uh, skill, skill set that I've learned inside my acting was to never doubt and just follow through. Because when you have doubt, you show something and you're not like following through, but something like at the end, it's, it's always something rough, but if you keep following through and pushing through at the end, there's like, that's when magic happens. So when I have an idea now for a video, I will always think of a few ideas, but I will always follow through and see where it can lead me. And if um, I never second doubt my ideas, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but try it. And that's what I kind of learned from acting, yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah, I imagine it was the, the perfect start to like getting into YouTube. Yeah. Because you would, had the act. So did you do any uh, acting classes or anything? Yeah, so I took acting classes for um, a year and a half. Um, improv, cold read, oh, uh, really? scene study. So I... Uh, and that was, so that wasn't out of school, that was like a extracurricular thing or... Yeah, so I uh, took a year off, like a year and a half off from right. school. So I said, hey, I'm leaving for a year and a half or something like that. I'll be back. But um, yeah, I'm not going to do art, whatever. And mm -hmm. so in that year and a half, that's what I pursued. Hmm. Yeah. Gosh, that's so cool. Do you, um, so do you find that you're more confident when you're doing YouTube videos because of that experience? I believe that plays a huge role into how I, uh, how I push through videos. Yeah, mm. so um, I think without that experience maybe, I would second guess a little more or just like be a little doubtful or hesitant. Mm. Um, but I, the experience gave me like, dude, just own your shit, do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's one. That's one really good thing about your videos. It's like it's high energy, mm -hmm. it's super happy, yeah. and you don't. I don't know. Even if it's a silly thing, yeah. you just it feels okay because of the way you've presented it. Cool. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. And so, so that was two years ago. You started the channel, roughly. Two years and like two months. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, that's crazy. I'm thinking about it right now. Of like the very start and now. Yeah. It's like. So much has happened, you know. And you got four hundred thousand subscribers now. Yeah. Oh, that's it's uh, it's it's awesome. Yeah. And you know, it's I've never expected it. Mm -hmm. Like two years ago, if you would, if like I would be happy with like fifty, or like a hundred, you know. Yeah, yeah. But for saying like, hey, Ross, in two years you'll have four hundred thousand subscribers that actually wanted to subscribe to you and watch your stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. Whoa, in that scale, you know, I'm like, I would never have thought. Right, yeah. Have you ever received a comment which has made you change the way you do, you do videos or? I think um, at, at the beginning, um, I took a lot of people's comments more to uh, personally, you know, mm -hmm. because I haven't built um, anything yet. Mm -hmm. It was like, it, it was mostly good. Some people, um, obviously, everyone's not going to be a fan. You know, you, you can't please everybody. Um, but I filtered through something that I would take into consideration and uh, just try to do what I want to do, but keep that in the back of my head, like what I could do more. So there was a certain point um, inside my videos where uh, maybe I had too much fun and there was less art. And so sometimes I went into the next video with maybe I should expand on the art more here and have less fun. I don't know. It like it, it was a weird like like learning experience, but um, it was essential for how things have developed. Mm. And I feel like I've found a flow now, and I can like really expand on that flow. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, did you go back to Art Center? Yes, I went back to Art Center um, because you know my I want to make my parents happy, mm -hmm. and I feel like graduating was an easy thing to do at three classes left you know I left art center with three classes under my belt I'm like and my mom's like come on please finish please finish and you know Asian 
Asian parents, you know, they love that piece of paper, even though it means nothing. <laughs> but I think it symbolizes a lot and it makes them happy. So I just went back and finished it and uh, tried to end with a bang. And um, I made them happy. And that's one thing they can stop bothering me about. <laughs> <laughs> and you were doing that whilst you were doing the YouTube? Yeah, that was insane. That was, was like, that was kind of insane. I kind of like, I, I don't want to say slacked off on classes, but I tried to um, do the best I can mm. and um, know that YouTube like was my thing, my, my like, you know, my, uh, my business as well. And uh, yeah. even so I sacrificed sometimes uh, like really amazing polished schoolwork for my YouTube channel. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, I've heard that Art Center is a little, uh, can be quite mili militant, yeah. like quite rigorous structured yeah, totally. is it uh it was it quite hard yeah it was um it was very intensive mm -hmm. lots of hours i pulled a lot of all-nighters and really yeah like on getting a project finished or yeah there were so many classes and they expect so much from you because the art center is borrowed like up here and that's why it's the art center mm -hmm. and so the good thing about it it teaches you to be um working professionals at a very early start and mileage. It builds up a lot of hours um, of you just like working and getting in the flow of things. Sometimes it can, people just work their brains off and they forget that it's supposed to be fun too. You didn't go to Art Center to like be robots and work for the rest of your lives. And I can see some people fall into that trap. And so I always sometimes sacrifice um, like amazing schoolwork for sleep. You know, I'm like, hey, my body. You know, yeah. and uh, at the end of the day, I want to take care of myself and be in a good headspace and be healthy rather than getting, I don't know, the perfect perspective right on a car, <laughs> you know. Right. But um, I still took a lot of all-nighters. Sometimes I would drive home and I would accidentally, like, nap a little bit. For, like, oh, my goodness. Five, like, four and a half seconds. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm almost home. All right. Yeah, so I had, like, there are certain times of that. I never crashed, though. Um, but, uh. Yeah, it's quite intensive. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that was just from being worked to the bone. Yes, our, our so center. much work. Yeah. Like, imagine, I, I think I had six or seven classes my first term, my first semester, and they all, so, um, four to, like four, three to five hours each class. And then the work is like three to five hours per class. So you have an average of 15 to 20 hours of homework a week, but then uh, 20 hours of being in class. Yeah. And it was like, I almost had absolutely no free time. I, I probably didn't have that much free time. Um, yeah, so it's not, a, it's not a party school, that's for sure. It is not a party school, but we find ways to celebrate, yeah. <laughs> but it's not a party school. Where, where do you think you fit in the, the class? You at top, bottom? I would like to say I earned myself up here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've worked very hard, um, so I don't think I'm down here. Um, well, like back then? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I've like worked and I try to um, always try to be um, on top. Yeah. And when I see someone like do something amazing and so much better, sometimes you feel, oh, dang, I worked so hard on it and it's just, there it looks so great. And you just go, oh, dude, it looks amazing, dude. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you want to do better next week. Yeah. You just keep trying and trying and trying. And so that's one thing that really helped me into building my system. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the connection and friends. Like that first job, you know, exposure. Yeah. And everyone is like, e everyone's on a wavelength of wanting to be up here. And so when you're trying to constantly be up here, you're gonna meet people and they're gonna recommend their friends and they're, they're, they're gonna recommend who's up here, you know. Um, and so overall, the community and the friends that I've gotten and, um, became great connections, and I've learned like a great system of working hard. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it sounds uh, that that's again a recurring thing I've noticed talking to people is like that's what a physical school gives you. Yeah. Like they say, uh, yeah, the five friends that you hang out with. Yeah. You know, average out their income. It's probably your income. Average out their weight. It's probably your weight. <laughs> like it's. Uh, you, you tend to become who you hang around with. Mm, interesting, yeah. Um, and I, so I, I can imagine why a super popular but uh, effective school for yeah. art uh -huh. 
would breed more and more like high standards, you know? Yeah. Um, totally so what, like, like, did you, so you would like meet up with friends like on the weekend or something, go Actually, to dinner and just be like, oh, look what you've done or something like that or? I used to work a lot at school. Okay. Like it was inspiring because I liked being in that place mm -hmm. of people like wanting to work and we would put on projector, a movie on the projector and we'd all just work. Um, but th like sometimes I realize I work too hard. Mm -hmm. You know, we all get that. And I'm like, ah, cause you're stuck in that headspace too of like wanting to work all the time. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a balance of work and fun. Mm -hmm. And so like slowly I began like um, not working less, but working more efficiently so I can have fun time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I tried not to work all the time and meet them all the time, but just enough um, so I can get where I want to be and also like, because we need to release sometime, like mm -hmm. our energy or stress and stuff like that. Yeah. Because yeah. that school is stressful. <laughs> yeah, but it seems so effective. Yeah. I've seen a few of, uh, like on your art station, you've shown like a, uh, your old drawing yeah. versus your new drawing. Yeah. Like the, you did the same thing, but right. several right. years apart. Uh -huh. Are some of those from before Art State uh, Center? Yeah, yeah. Um, that is before Art Center. That was like when I first started digital art, which was I think 16 um, in high school. Yeah. I realized that you could do this for a living. And so I would just draw a lot. And that was one of the first drawings. And I'm just like, oh my God. But at the time, you probably thought, like, it's not that bad, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, it's kind of cool, you know, I'm drawing, and it's kind of looking kind of cool. And, um, yeah, so that was, like, 16, and then till now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I guess when you arrived at Art Center, was there a moment when you realized that you had a, lo a long way to go? So leading up to Art Center, right, because it's really hard to get in, so you have to have a bomb portfolio. And I knew from then I could not get in with my skills at all. Hmm. So I had to um, make sure I work so hard for the next few months to build a portfolio to get in. Or else they're not gonna set me, you know, how can I be one of the 20 if I'm not good? Hmm. And so after I found out that I wanted to go to Art Center and I wanted to do it for a living, I trapped myself in my room and drew eight to 12 hours a day mileage 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 studying anatomy i'm trying to catch up because i feel wow. like i feel like i'm behind mm. you know i'm like my art skills are not like i know for a fact mm. and so i looked online and i looked at how to improve fast and what i need to learn you know color anatomy um drawing skill digital painting environments i just tried 8 12 hours a day have a schedule just just breathe through barely took any breaks um but i keep myself stimulated and I'll try, try to learn. Um, Cause that, at that time, I thought that was the way to learn, you know, just cram everything and just do it mileage. <laughs> and so, um, like now I know it's like a different way to learn. But back then I just like made sure that I needed to get mileage to create a portfolio to get me in. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily enough, <laughs> I got in, so. Do you think there's a, uh... Um, because everyone's heard the phrase, you know, practice makes perfect, yeah. um, and you just need to practice. Mm -hmm. um, I learned through trying it myself that if you practice alone, mm -hmm. uh, the, the mileage thing, yeah. um, it can actually, if you don't know you're making mistakes, it can actually lead you astray, right? Mm, interesting. Um, do you, are there any exercises or things that you found to be particularly helpful? to improve at a faster rate? Um, there's a, a few that I've really learned and I, um, I tell, because I have a Patreon too, yeah. and I, I, uh, I run like video demo podcasts on there and I, some of the topics are, hey, these are ways to improve faster or these are some tips. And some things I've really learned that helped me was um, Headspace because I think we learn best when we're having fun. Simple, math. And so, before, sometimes, like, I don't want to learn when I'm stressed because I feel like stuff's on your mind and you can't absorb information faster. So if you're having fun while you're learning, mm. um, it's a lot easier. So one way I did that was I mixed um, per, uh, studies into my personal work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I, the end product was a personal piece for me. But through that process, I would learn, like, anatomy 
to fix an arm or a leg or something like that. Right. And so right. I'm building my own piece. I'm having a lot of fun, and I'm learning anatomy at the same time. And so that was like a, that the headspace thing, and also like your environment um, plays a key part of how you feel when you create um, and improve. Yeah. You know, like um, clean workspaces or a clean desktop or a simple mind. And that's one big goal that I'm um, very happy that I am uh, pushing forward, like being clean and organized so I can like have an organized life because <laughs> uh -huh. I feel like my life is chaotic sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, like good headspace is like almost like a number one thing. Mm -hmm. And that is so complex because every factor can play into a good headspace. Mm -hmm. So getting um, adequate sleep, you know what I mean? Like people, you, you need your brain rested to absorb information. And some people at our center are literally pulling all-nighters every single day, right, for like three days straight, and they learn at a slower rate because they're stressing themselves out. Yeah. And they are just working at a very distressed level. And how can you learn at that kind of like headspace? Mm -hmm. So I sometimes just sleep because I learn faster. Mm -hmm. And so I just make sure that I'm wanting to learn I'm engaged and in a good headspace and try to mix both um, analytical and fun into what I'm doing and that helped me um, improve a lot faster. Hmm, yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. Are there any examples where you you made something based on a, a study that you put into it? Um, it's a lot of homework, but I can't think of something at the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll get back to that. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because that's that's definitely something that uh, that I struggle with, and probably most artists do, is like they have the stuff that they want to do, and right. it's the it's the it's the fast cars, it's the futuristic cities, yeah. it's the girls in yeah. bikinis, whatever it is, yeah. and then everybody hears you got to do the traditional stuff because mm -hmm. traditional art is important, yeah. and it's anatomy with those crazy names, L Laticus, yeah. you know, the tibia, whatever these yeah. <laughs> names are, yeah. and, and complex books that explain color and how light interacts with it. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to get into that, right? Yeah, totally, oh my God. Sometimes stuff goes in one ear, out the other. I bought a book on light I don't remember anything on it. <laughs> like I, leg I'm telling you right now, I don't think I can recall anything I've absorbed. Key pieces of information and realize I'm not a textbook person. You know, mm. even in school, I'm not a textbook person. I feel like everybody is like has their best and own way of learning mm. and doing something, and so. I cannot read an, art, an article and obtain information. For me, I had to apply it. Hmm. And so I would see bounce light. And I wanted to attack it with this next personal piece on how to do bounce light. Yeah, and yeah. so reading on bounce light, oh, okay, this is the sky color, bounce on the shadow, bounce on the chin. Okay, I understand that. But not until I did it, I fully, like, I started to really understand it. And so, Everyone has their way of learning, and that's that's my way of learning. Yeah. 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 And how how did you how did you discover that? Um, I think watching. Oh, the fast way I think I learned was watching my um, my mentors paint over my work, and it I saw what they did and why they did it, and they're more experienced than I am. And so I kind of like, oh, because I worked on that painting, say, for like four hours. And then they come in with a fresh eye with their skill set and their database of knowledge and they paint over my own work. And I'm like, oh, I could be doing that more. I could be cutting this shape. And they ex would explain it, why they're doing it. So I, that's like my favorite way of learning too, is watching my mentors paint over my own work and seeing why they did that. Right, yeah. yeah. I've noticed that, that, that that's almost like a shortcut when you get um, somebody experienced to give you feedback on your work because yeah. they'll find something that you might, it could take you two years to discover it by yourself, yeah. you know, but yeah. because they're so more experienced, they're finding things that you just, you can't see. Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. 
It, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's hard because there's, there's a lot of people out there that are going the yeah. Like if you don't have a mentor and you're not at school, um, how would you recommend someone find a mentor? Right. I think people are scared about this, but if you break it down to the root, simply take a chance and reach out. Email, um, find stuff, you know? Like, of course, everyone's not gonna be on board right away, but I got my first mentor by taking a leap and connecting. Mm -hmm. And so we have this program called Independent Study at my school. And it's where they pay instructors or of your choosing to teach you one-on-one. -on -one. Hmm. And so this, um, so my mentor was Jamie Jones, and he's, I think, viewed as one of the top digital artists in the industry. Um, and so I was, you know, like, he, he, kn he doesn't know me at all, and why would he help me, blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to take a chance and see whether he would do it. And so I attended his workshop. I really recommend if people are trying to look for a mentor, is meet in the most genuine and authentic way as possible in person, right? Okay. And what, why is that? I think it's just something about the human connection, and it's just like you can. It's on paper, like you can just see and breathe and experience how you might feel about it, mm -hmm. rather than an email. Sometimes we pass by emails like, "What do you want from me?" Right? Right. Next, what do you want from me? Next, yeah. oh, okay, you want me to answer questions? So I'm really sorry. I don't but if you're in person. Right, mm -hmm. and it's like a little different because, well, he had a workshop, and I attended that workshop. I really wanted to watch him paint, and so he was doing his workshop, and I was like, okay, I want to ask him now. I was like, hey, um, he's like, hey, like my name's Ross, and my school has um, a, a program where they can pay instructors uh, to help teach us. It's called an independent study, and I love your work. I've been following for a while. Would that be something you'd be interested in? He was like, oh, that, that, that sounds really cool, actually. Shoot me an email. I was like, okay, cool. And so wow. just by that, I was like, it, 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 it makes a lot of sense to me to just try to engage in a very like authentic, genuine way. And I feel like the response would be, starting from there, the response would have that much more of an effect on you mm -hmm. um, than an email. Yeah, <laughs> right? definitely. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's so true. Like. Yeah, emails. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone gets too many of them. Text messages too, right? Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But then someone meets you at a restaurant or something and you go like, oh. Yeah. You start listening. Right. Um, so if, so I would recommend conventions, mm -hmm. workshops, meeting at a mixer or something, an event or something like that. In person, I feel like, you know, because we're meant to connect right. in person. Yeah. Um, it's just convenient for the digital app and we don't have that much of attachment to how we feel about a person over email. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it should, life is about connections and you wanna make a good connection and uh, that's a genuine authentic way, mm. yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. I think, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what country you're in, you just gotta find someone local, right? Yeah, yeah. totally, for it's, sure. You guys have an advantage here in LA, I think. You think so? Yeah, with all the artists. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. You're from Australia. Yes, yes. It's uh, far. <laughs> it is far. I mean, and there are artists in where I live in Brisbane. Yeah. I mean, there's artists all over the world, but uh, yeah, it does feel like you guys have a bit more of a ratio of artist to non-artist yeah. in LA. But uh, yeah, which is a lot more cool. competition. It is exactly uh, yes. Hard to yeah. stand out. Yeah. yeah. What do you foresee? Um, what do you think you'll be doing in your future? Like, you're going to be continue growing your YouTube. Right, so YouTube was more of a like a new goal for me, cause I, like back then, you know, when I was like five, there was no YouTube, <laughs> so I can't make that like a goal. I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> right. So, my root, what I've always wanted to do, was create worlds and characters, mm -hmm. and that's I know for a fact that is in my blood, and I would always want to make worlds and characters, and so everything now that we've gained and everything popping up. It's just to feel that. Mm -hmm. And so my, um, my first book, uh, Nima, which is my own character and my own world, and I think it's through one year of YouTube, one and a half years of YouTube, I realized that I need something that's mine out there. I remember my root. You, mm -hmm. YouTube is great. I love making people laugh and teaching people and creating content, but 
I feel like I don't have anything that's mine out there. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, made a mental stamp. I need to have my Kickstarter out for my book this year, no matter what. Hmm. That was my one, that, that, that was my one goal that I wanted for 2017, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 2017. Nice. Um, so I'm really happy um, about that. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of crazy too, because right when my Kickstarter uh, was out, my YouTube channel, uh, my YouTube channel blew up, right? And so I had to, I was at conflict myself, but deep down I know I need to finish that book, and YouTube can wait, you know, you like they're they're your audience, they love you, they'll come back wherever. So I just need to find my way because I never say no in my vocabulary. So, hmm. like, so I just need to find a way to um, do my YouTube and do my book. Yeah. And even if it's an investment of money, hiring an editor, which I've just hired, you know, and just trying to grow um, my business, but I need to do my book. That's my number one thing. Mm -hmm. And so my end goal is to have like a studio, a place um, to create all these worlds and characters and have um, games and movies and TV shows and toys and franchises, like the Whoa. next studio Ghibli or something like that. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so Nima is the first step. Wow. So it's a, it's, it's a book, it's going to be a movie, it's what? Right. So the book, I think, is a great way to put on producers and studio desk, like, hey, this is a tangible product. I've created this world, and um, there's a story, and there's a following behind it because of my YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. There's the success because studios, you know, money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So numbers marketing. help. Yeah, yeah marketing, right? Um, so there's numbers behind it and it is not like I'm a, I'm a nobody. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to fuel everything into making that book like, hey, would you like to make a TV show out of it? Mm -hmm. And so I'll pitch it around. Um, and uh, I think people are attracted to um, safety Right, mm -hmm. and so they can see that um, there's backing behind it of the Kickstarter and my YouTube channel, and so they're more likely to greenlight it. How much did you raise on the Kickstarter? Um, I think the final number was 167 thousand. Wow, what do you think of that? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I I I try not to like like think about it, but I'm so thankful for them to give me that freedom to be able to do it. And now, the hardest thing actually is to do it <laughs> with everything I've going on. Um, so I'm trying to be smart and um, just make sure that I get all my foundation great, which is um, consistent YouTube videos with my new editor, have um, like my community growing and have side money, everything like that, so I can successfully start my book mm -hmm. without any like, like stuff mm -hmm. in my way. Yeah. yeah. You uh, you mentioned before that you've got an agent. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was the decision that led you to to go with an agent? Right. Um, so there are two agents. Um, one is I've gotten on my first movie. So back to the connection thing, right? He's actually um, the agent to my director too, and also low key. I'm not sure I can say this, but Mart Martin Scorsese's agent too. Oh. Yeah. Um, so he kind of reps literary. Um, and he saw Echo, which is uh, Earth Echo. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, when you're ready, let me know. Ah. And so Nima is actually like, when I'm ready, and if, if he's still down, I have that open line. I'm like, hey, blah, blah. If not, I don't, the agent is to find you work and to help you get in. But I feel like by then, um, I can kind of do it, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't know where I'll be in a year and a few months, but I'm guessing like, I feel like I'll have a lot more pull into where I can get in. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, so that is for the Nima book. Mm -hmm. But for my YouTube channel, um, I'm under uh, Maker Studios by Disney. And um, my decision to go into that was I, they had database of um, stock stuff I can use, music, videos, sound effects. Oh, okay. And I wanted access to that. And at the time, like my YouTube channel wasn't making anything really, you know. I was like, "Hey, I'm at like thirty thousand, forty thousand, um, not really making anything at all." Yeah. And it would be smarter just to join because you have access to all these things, and they're they're taking just a cut of nothing. <laughs> right. But they saw something in me, um, and so they put time into me and investment 
um, of energy into finding me things because they think I can make it big. What, what do they help you with? Um, so they're finding me gigs now because I have a, like, I feel like my credentials are getting um, like elevated mm -hmm. and so they can pitch me to things. And so they would find me uh, gigs um, of a, like pair me up. Like if a studio or a company, hey, we're looking for maybe an Asian American influencer in the, the art space, who do you have? Ross, Ross Jones, he's like the only one I feel like. Yeah. And so it's like, hey, so yeah, I feel like in. that, yeah, right? <laughs> I feel like that's why um, I could be important to them and they could get more revenue off of my, um, my field mm -hmm. because they're not that many people. And so um, they, uh, they cut like three to four or 5,000 channels from their roster but luckily they kept me wow, <laughs> and because yeah. I feel like I have something to offer them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I feel like they also get me um, uh, like spaces into things because it's Disney Maker, you know, if I want a booth space, if they want stage time, if, they want, if I want to talk um, from their behalf, like Disney Maker presents Ross Jaws. I have that option. Um, so it's like a network of um, of tools I can use for my channel. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of negative things about totally. multi-channel networks and yep. yeah. Like I've got I got a friend in Australia. I run this little YouTube meetup, and yeah. they're like, oh, don't, cool. don't ever do multi-channel. You know, uh, yeah. join one of those people because yeah. he's like locked in for four years, and they take oh, like fifty percent of his cuts, and they're doing nothing. Like he can't even email them. And I'm like, ooh. Is this friend like cl close to you or? Um, no, like, uh, so he's, his channel's got like 70,000 subscribers yeah. or something, but he's basically giving it up because it's yeah. too depressing. Because they take half. You should never take more than 30%. Mm. They, and I think, see, the multi-channel networks know that. They can bank off of what you're doing. Um, so I feel like unless you have pool, you're like, hey, I have this and I want a better deal. Unless you have a friend that's looking out for you, right? Because at the end of the day, it's all about money. People, people know that, but they don't want to talk about it. But unless you have like a friend in there, and luckily I had a friend looking out for me. And so my, um, they cut me a better deal. Yeah. Um, and so that is so sad. Four years, 50%. I can't even imagine that. Depressing. That's really depressing. Yeah. I, I would be pretty depressed too. What, what is it that you think that, that gave you that drive to just want to go off on your own? It's hard to pinpoint anything but my root. And it's just a kid, you know? I, I think going back to it, I really want to see my own stuff and my world come to life. My own characters have stories. And I feel like if I'm not contributing to that, I'm wasting my time. Hmm. Okay. And so sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my time at these companies I work for sometimes. Like, I don't think this is, this is gonna get me, okay, financial security, they're gonna pay me, um, maybe a name here and there, but it's really not doing anything for my future goal and what I really wanna do. And so. Um, Are you brothers, you have brothers and sisters? I'm an only child. Oh, yeah. okay, there you go. Yeah. Right, so that sort of explains why your parents were sort of like, oh. The spotlight was always on me. Yeah. Like, always on me, I did not like it. <laughs> you get a lot of fan art. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. Like at conventions, I usually announce I'm going to Anime Expo or Comic Con, and some of the fan art are absolutely incredible. Yeah. And nice. yeah, it's um, of me and my dog, and me and my original character. Mm. They're usually about me, my dog, or me and my original character. And it's like so like surreal yeah. to actually see that because of they must really like you mm -hmm. <laughs> to be able to want to create something for you yeah i'm thinking like who would i create stuff for you know i'm like i must really like them and like sometimes they put so much effort into it and they write notes <laughs> and they're like you inspired me so much you know i was going to school and you make me want to do art for a living i'm like whoa like last year my first convention like the love i've gotten i've never met followers or, uh, or watchers or subscribers and on the third day, I started crying because it was like so beautiful for me. And I felt like I understood a lot more about why I'm, like, what I'm doing 
because before I met them, I was mainly doing it like for me, right? It's like, hey, I'm making a YouTube channel for me and I want to teach um, and I want to like make it a successful channel and I felt like everything was more steered towards me. And after I met them, I realized the impact that I made and how I'm helping people actually. Mm. And like hearing it from them, I'm like, you really helped me. And they started crying. Like I've gotten a like, few girls who've cried and like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm meeting you. I'm like, really me? And so like, yeah, you've helped me so much in my life. And I'm like, oh really? And so after like two days of that, the third day, um, I parked in the garage and I started tearing up. I'm like, this is so beautiful because it's not about me anymore. It's about them. And slowly that transition really started because like it should be, you know, about giving. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was really beautiful when um, getting all the fan art all the time. I'm always like, oh my God, this is so, so cute, you know? And like, it's, it makes me really happy, yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. How do you handle the, the, the fame that, uh, that fame. YouTube brings? Oh man, this, this has, I think it will be a struggle for anyone in this space about um, I think when you get in a spotlight you get a lot more pressure on your shoulders a lot more things are expected or um, so basically I before I felt like my life was a bit more simple I can wake up I can draw I can play games I can eat I can sleep simple I love my life yeah and now all these responsibilities of You're like a role model yeah yeah it's like it's, sometimes the pressure can take over a little bit and I, and I just need to learn. Mm. I'm always learning my own system. And right now it's um, taking all of that, absorbing it, and finding a way to um, release it. Mm. And so sometimes I felt like I didn't have a release system of like, like you know, working all the time and then, because my studio is at home, so I'm working all the time. So it builds up and so I'm slowly learning to let go a little bit and enjoy myself. Cause that, that's my hardest thing in my life right now, right. is taking a step back from my work and having fun because I'm always thinking about work. Right. What's my next video? Yeah. What do I have to do? I have so much, I have to do my book, blah, blah, blah. And so I never have a moment of like, ah, oh, I'm having fun. Right. It, it's always just like, I have stuff to do. And so that's, I feel like that's my life challenge right now, and it's to learn the balance of work and play. That's crazy you say that, because I, I couldn't think of a more happy <laughs> YouTuber, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's a, it's, I, Do you think that comes naturally, that, that, that vibe? I think it's becoming a lot more natural than it was before. Mm -hmm. I think before it was like how I wanted to um, what I wanted to do with my videos. I wanted a nice, uh, I wanted to give people an escape, a good time from whatever they're, de they're dealing with. Everyone has stuff going on in their lives, right? Yeah. And I want to make art fun. And if I can somehow provide a good time and experience for my followers, mm -hmm. um, that'll make me happy. Mm -hmm. And so I think over time that, because um, you become who you want to be mm -hmm. and um, a habit you can actually form it within yourself to become happier. Hmm. And so over time of trying to create that vibe, it became almost like nature of how I wanted things to go. Even, even if I'm feeling depressed that day, even if something tragic happened that day, I know that headspace and I know when to turn it on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, yeah, it, it's always about the video and it's never about me. And so I can't make it about like, oh, I'm so sad today, I'm gonna draw. I'm like, hey guys, this is for you, mm. kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, I find that, that that's also what separates the, the best YouTubers from the ones that are struggling, I guess, is that the, the, the good ones know that it, yeah, it's about the viewer. You have to be delivering something of value, yeah. um, whatever that is, yeah. whether it's comedy or a tutorial or, yeah. or anything else. Uh -huh. Yeah, hmm. So you tapped into that quite early. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think, uh, because um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of um, yeah, beginner art, yeah. um, people that try to follow along with you. Yeah. What do you think are some of the biggest mistakes that beginners make? I think really it's simple, not having an open mind. Okay. It's, I, I feel like that has helped me and I've learned and I've experienced that. 
because if you're not if you're closing yourself off to some methods or tools mm -hmm. then you're already closing yourself off to the opportunity of what that could have became mm -hmm. okay and so at the beginning like um for an example in the concept art industry we're really used to using photos because we have a deadline we can't paint every grass mm -hmm. you know what i mean sure. we just take a picture of grass extract it put it in or something like that and yeah. make it look like a painting and so some people in school they're like photos are cheating Photos mm -hmm. are cheating. Blah, blah, blah. So they're already restricting that opportunity of using photos and learning from it inside their own work. That's interesting. Yeah, that's true. And so I think that's the biggest mistake of people thinking they can't do something. And so that's one thing for my channel. I want to show you that art can come from anywhere. You can be inspired by anything, whether it's food. Sometimes I use food and paint into characters or using like myself and gender bending myself into a female character. I don't know. <laughs> but I want to show people that it can really come from anywhere and you don't have, there's not one correct way of doing something. Mm -hmm. And you can, and if you have an idea of using something, follow through with it. I noticed, yeah, you, um, you use a color scheme at the start. Um, after you've got the sketch done, you you pull like I noticed the uh, I watched that video the um, oh I don't even know her name the Suicide Squad girl Holly Quinn Holly Quinn yeah yeah and you use the crunch wrapper yeah as the color scheme yeah um, yeah why do you choose a, a, an image to base a color scheme off I'm very curious um, there's a few reasons why I do that um, so a video a lot of filming right and um, sometimes. I take the base of a color and I use that to let me feel the piece forward. Because when you take a palette, say food, like a crunch wrapper, yeah. there's blues, there's reds, there's whites. Mm -hmm. And so it's a limited palette for you to choose from. If I'm doing it completely on my own already and I'm, it can go in a million directions and the filming time, right. the filming time can get dragged on 30 hours, I haven't figured it out yet. and so. The color palette is the food. Also, it's people constraint. love. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it's YouTubey. You know, it's yeah, like yeah, something yeah. fun. That's true. I throw it on, and it has a set color scheme, mm. and I feel like that could work with Harley Quinn because she's dark. You know, and I feel like those cool values can be very good for that image. Hmm. And um, yeah, I took a chance on it, and uh, just naturally kind of progress and I didn't use like greens you know because right, I, yeah. I didn't have greens um, so it kind of restricted um, my flow hmm yeah I like that idea that's something I've heard a lot of like um, like if you say like you can you've got an hour like I had a blender right. meetup recently yeah and I we had a 60 minute uh, blender competition people brought their laptops oh, along cool. and yeah. uh, and I wanted to just say like, yeah, all right, make whatever you want within 60 minutes. But I knew that that would lead to a lot of like paralysis. Like, oh, what's, what about this? What about this? There's too many, too many choices, right? Yeah. So you pick a theme. Mm -hmm. And totally. it's, it's weird that constraints give you more freedom almost. I agree. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but I like that. I like that idea. So it's just, it's, it's a matter of limiting yourself as a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a theme to put you and the viewer inside the same wavelength. Mm. Hey, Halloween theme, we kind of get it. And then the crunch wrap, oh, we kind of get the palette. Mm. It's not like, so it helps theme the videos so people remember it. Mm. Yeah. Hey. That's, that's cool. Right? Uh, you remember when you did this out of this? You turned uh, Azula, a hot dog into Azula or something. It, it gives people like a sense of, um, like, a, like a stamp. Mm. of um, what it is. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Like a marketing thing as well. Yeah. Quite clever. <laughs> I think, uh, what was it? Uh, Dr. Seuss, uh, the cat in the hat, mm. was a challenge by one of his friends mm. who said he couldn't write a book using only six words or something. Yeah. And so he kept, oh, maybe it was the green eggs and ham one. Something like that. Yeah. But yeah, and he did it. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, what do you think are some of the biggest wastes of time when you're trying to learn how to do what you do? The biggest waste of time? Um, I think it's, I think we all do this as artists also, is trying to attack something and trying to keep attacking it and you're being stressed out and you don't know what's 
what it's like doing. Like if I'm trying to um, draw a hand, I'm, I'm trying to fix that hand. I've been working on that hand for an hour. I've used no reference, but I'm in that spiral of thought where it goes, oh, maybe, maybe this hand or this hand or this hand, and we wait an hour, whether we can just find a reference of a hand mm. and learn from that. Yeah, yeah. But we, okay, this is something my best friend, like one best friend has taught me, mm-hmm. is that um, certainty is primitive. Okay. So sometimes we are very certain that we're gonna get that hand over the next one, over the next one, over the next one. Mm. So we don't um, entertain the option to grab the reference photo. And sometimes I have to remind myself, it's easier to just grab the reference photo into it. But sometimes we just want to do it because we're already there and we want to just keep doing it. That's true, actually. Yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's hot, it's boring to go through that reference and totally. look at the muscle structure of a hand. Yeah. It, it takes you out of your spiral, like your train of thought, but sometimes we need that. Mm. But we just have to remember that we need that. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Uh, let's say somebody wants to become, I don't know, an artist yeah. like you, digi- digital yeah. painting drawer, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, and, and they've got two years off after high school. They just want to take a couple of years off just to focus on that. Yeah. And you could map out, and they're going to be self-taught. They're not going to go to school. Self-taught, completely self-taught. Yeah. Like not even trade school. Not even trade school. Okay. So they have to f- choose their own learning. Okay. All right. Uh, what sort of training regime would you map out for them? I would work on the most mileage. Um, because there's ten thousand hours for a reason. It's like ten thousand hours doesn't like. Oh, we didn't grab that number somewhere. You know, ten thousand hours. 10,000 hours is to train your hand-eye coordination mm-hmm. because it's muscle memory at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't draw a hand if you've never drawn it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, right. So through that mileage, just sit down and train your hand to do what you want it to do. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, okay, kind of get it it's rusty or something, blah, blah, blah. So I would say mileage of um, drawing, basic drawing skill. It's... It's, it's insane how people sometimes forget that step because we have everything now and we forget to do the basics. The, the, the Actually violence, put the, the pencil to paper. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like learn how to, it's, everything is hand-eye coordination. The, the root of it, you know, the cavemen, whatever, it's primitive. You, something, tool, in hand. Yeah. Um, I don't draw as much as I should. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, how much, how much do you? How much do you practice? I um, well, like pen, paper, pencil, anything. Yeah. So like uh, primitive, traditional drawing. I probably spent an hour and a half this whole year. Whoa! <laughs> no I know. Maybe two. Okay. Two and a half. I don't know. The rest has been on the Cintiq. Uh, rest had been, yeah, painting YouTube channel, Cintiq, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I've gotten all that mileage out with the first five years. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that I should never stop learning that, but it's like the opportunity doesn't call for it yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe when I'm like more structured and stable, I'll pick it up again. But um, right now it's more wiser for me to not. Um, right. Cause I've, I feel like I've done it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if someone wants to start, I would say mileage. Observing and drawing. Observing. Observe, draw. Observe, draw. Hand-eye coordination. Oh, is that the leaf you want? Is that the tree you wanted? And through that mileage, you learn how you do things. How, how do you check that it's uh, correct? I think if you're happy with it. Okay. It's nine times out of ten, you're not. Mm, right? Right, true. So I think when you get to a point where it starts to look at it, it and you know it, don't like lie to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't look like it, yeah. So I would say, um, because through observing and through the mileage, you'll find new ways how you would do it. Mm-hmm. So how you shade a tree is different from anyone else. Mm-hmm. How you cross, uh, cross hatch, how you come up with ideas. And through that mileage, you start to build your mental database and your mental tools mm-hmm. of how you approach something. Yeah. And you need that in order to, so that's your root foundation on how you attack task in the future Mm -hmm. so i would just say start basic anatomy you know observe hand-eye coordination um and definitely i would say wait is this like networking as well you could yeah Yeah. sure i say network for sure because you know 
at the end of the day, when you're ready, you need connections. To go out and meet people. Right. And make a genuine connection, you know? Don't, like, go out to meet them because they can offer you something. Right. Good point. Because I hate that. Yeah, but if you true. start early, like I did, um, and I found other 16-year-olds that were doing what I'm doing, and now we're friends. Like, mm. now we're, like, in the industry, we're friends. So I would say, understand that you do have to network, but never do it for the sole purpose of networking. Right. Just Fine. be friends. Yeah, just be friends. Because at the end of the day, we just all want, like, people we vibe with. Exactly. And so find friends that are doing the same thing you're doing. Don't expect anything out of it. Help each other get to where you guys want to be. And in those two years, you know, you both will learn a lot and you guys are friends forever. It's a great note to leave on. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, thanks very much for yeah. taking the time. Of course. Thanks for having me. It's, it's been a blast.